distinguish the leaders of government processes. Ladies, gentlemen, and dear friends, good morning. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this event for giving me this opportunity. The subject of this conference is excellent and uh, embodies great wisdom. May it prove an illuminated guide to our lives in the present world. In 2001, I was in a temple retreat. There, for the very first time, I found myself pondering about the truth of the universe and the life. Full of doubt, I asked myself the most inextricable question was to be expected after the fly of life is extinguished. Where do we go after nothing remains of our body but dust? What remains of us after our consciousness is blown out? But just as sky can't keep the clothes in place, or a pando can hold on to the the moon's reflection. Just like a mirror can't truly possess the image it reflects. So the world can't forever hold on to the traces of a man. The attachments we make throughout our lives. Money, fame, power, family, love, friendships, we can't carry any of them with us to our next life. We come to this world alone and live alone. I'm pretty handy. Nothing in the, this camera world, not even our very bodies. Well, a company is as beyond this lifetime. And yet people pay so much attention to the mountain, motivated by greed or anger or desire. They go to attached to this ephemeral world. Why steer away away from element in search of money? Some work excruciatingly hard and neglected their house in search of power, some are willing to hate even the people closest and the dearest. To them, in chasing love, people are willing to sacrifice their equilibrium. This king, heartache, and mountain is stability. Unfortunately, they don't feel appreciate that time well, even truly, consuming anything like fire, blazing, say a fold of drug rice, leaving nothing behind. Everything in this world, including our body, can be used, but not owned. Nothing belongs to us only when we meditated in the place the true quality of a forest. Can we see the true movie causes of the past, present, and the future? And only thus can we find them how to truly improve our existence as we comprehend the nature of living. Human may possibly be the most intelligent animal on this earth. And yet the truth is that all humans, whether then lived a life of plenty or of shame, whether of joy or of wretchedness, are bound by nature's law of cause and effect. Everything is conditional, conditional 
or life is temporary. It's physical meaning illusory. That is why Chinese soldiers have taught us to honor the living philosophy of the Buddha by letting his teachings of morality and fidelity penetrate into our minds. We can be inspired to life, live a life of virtue. Looking back, and more than 5,000 years of Indian history, one finds horror ancient traces of great impulse that once bore witness to heroic stories are now reduced to nothing but to risk ejections and the size of national pilgrimage. Through meditation, we cannot go off this troubling source and let our minds be at peace and uh, explore the pleasant beliefs of mindfulness. Thus, we comprehend that our body is just a, a object, a tool to carry us through this world. Our alaya is like a guest from a far away place for a benefit time. It stays in our body, just as we stay in a hotel. The way we perceive the Ganges River does not change. So after our lifetime, it looks as the same to us, whether we are three or eight years old. But our bodies clearly do change. They are quite quite different at three than they are 80. What is it? That remains constant then. What is it? That is permanent. What is it? That keeps changing. In reincarnation, we are born into this world from a different corners of universe. Unchanging soul in a changing body. The former is eternal, the latter decays and go in both aging units and dies. We will put on this oath so we can each do our best for the benefit of our family, friends, neighbors, for the benefit of all sentient beings, sentient beings but our bodies confuse us, leading us as trying ephemeral oceans to shoes. We waste our partial loves while never e experience true happiness. Moreover, this who only push wealth, fame, and power interact heady they are surroundings, feeding their own desires at the expense of the happiness of others. But nature's not understand for it. These people might be able to take advantage of others for their selfish reasons for a short while. But in the long term, they will suffer devastating humility. The goods of this world has power and uh, social studies should always be used for the benefit of other sentient beings, never sufficiently and uh, never for harm. I pay my highest respect to RSS India, to my knowledge, all members in this exalted organization have been pursuing incredible goals. They are devout 
their loves to the happiness of all Indians, this kind of altruistic commitment is increasingly there in today's world. The truth of the universe is vast and profound, but the mind can unite the multitudes like thousands streams following into the same ocean, or thousands of trains running towards the same destination. The supporting Dharma can only be contemplated, but never it's polycate in language, even with the ink of sea water and the pants of a mountain remove. It's impossible to completely explain the meaning of even one word of Dharma. Our Alaya consciousness floats in this circle of samsara. Our mind is polluted and uh, so the search for the truth through meditation has become an important calling for many. Only this way can we renounce this material reward, letting go of the dress of both and dust. Only this way we can become the truth owners of our lives if we mistake the body for the true self and seek only to satisfy its desires, we will find our service etiquette to good food and beautiful clothes to studies and to luxury. We will be happiness. Their attachments are the cause of our values confusions, pains, and obstacles to true peace, leading Excuse only me. to life of unhappiness, the suffering will carry past this single life, onto many future incarnations. Excuse me, please close your... But tell me 15 minutes. No, just uh, 10 to 12 minutes. Yeah, okay. two minutes finish. <laughs> Otherwise, we have to skip our lunch. Yeah, I know. A real practitioner of resides has mind in Smehi. He will not get attached to anything or any way in this world. He loves God is to benefit others, whether gliding through hill plants of dove, downing down. Here on earth, the mind of the practitioner will see two difference in this mind mindset. He will not feel samsara. His mind will not grow the attachments and will see two distinction between hair and law, sternity and motion, love and dice. This is the true nirvana. It is the door of the universe. Thank you so much for your time. Best wish to this confidence. Have a great success. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Satwa Chang.